think everybody has record permission that has it enabled. So when y'all are ready in the studio, Coach, we can get started. <clears throat> All right. Well, I'd like to start uh, thanking our fans, parents, the students, recruits that were at the game and a uh, great home game atmosphere. And I really appreciate uh, the folks that were there the whole game and your commitment. It was a great comeback win. And um, guys rallied as a football team and as what we needed in that moment. And uh, comebacks are all about responding and, and showcasing grit and resiliency, which has been a, a calling card of our program, one that we didn't show the week prior. And so something that uh, was talked about a lot coming out of the last loss. And I was proud of the way the guys – came together uh, as a staff, as a team, and there was some key leadership, uh, which we'll talk about at some point, I'm sure. Uh, but the way that we came back and played uh, as a unit, offense, defense, special teams, sideline energy, down two scores, missing some key players, uh, said a lot about the fight in our football team. And uh, La Tech, you know, did a great job in the first half. And obviously we hurt ourselves in some areas. I thought we started fast, you know, uh, three straight completions. One's an explosive. And then we have a penalty, um, which brings back, you know, a 20-yard gain goes from first and 10 to first and 25, which is a drive killer. And things that we have to fix. Uh, playing good in the first quarter on offense uh, was not a strength of ours going into that game. We started fast, and, and then we really self-implode when you have a penalty, uh, particularly one that didn't need to happen. And so an area we need to improve, I, I thought we played complementary football in the second half, and, and our will to win in that locker room and on that football field was palpable. It's very proud of our, our uh, team in the locker room. It was captains first. You know, uh, Sean Brown did a great job talking to the group right away when they got in there. Uh, Davin Van, you know, offensively guys speaking up and and you could just feel their willingness um, to be different than they were the week prior. And we played complimentary football and, and that's something we have to do for four quarters or longer, however, how, however long it takes. And your captains have to be captains in those moments. And you see like the first drive of the second half, um, we go three and out, Davin Van, Comes free on a pass rush, hits the quarterback. Second straight week, he's had a an interception created through his quarterback pressure. The uh, second week in a row, it was a pick six as well. Great play by Donovan Kaufman. And then the next drive, the defense is right back out there, three and out. Offense goes on a 13-play drive, converts on third and short, consecutive um, two straight times in that drive, which was an area we wanted to be better in and were and scores a touchdown and uh, takes the two-score game and flips it the other way. We scored on every possession in the second half. Offensively, we possessed the ball, um, played way more physical at every position group on that side of the football. I was really proud of, of a lot of things over there in the perimeter, especially you know, defensively held them to three points in the second half and had a really good goal line stand. Uh, I thought – that was a key, something we needed to do on defense. And Caden Fordham, you know, made a play down there and uh, got him off the goal line. And uh, C.J. Bailey came in, played fast. You know, obviously he had the one interception. But besides that, I thought he made really good decisions. He threw the ball well. He gave his guys opportunities. He used his legs when he needed to to get us some first downs. And, you know, to have a, a comeback victory uh, with a freshman quarterback and and – both backup corners in the game I thought was impressive as a football team. And it wasn't just the three guys that came in. Obviously, they had a lot to do with it. The next man up always does. But sometimes when uh, injuries take place, the guys around them will start trying to do too much. And I felt like it was the opposite. They trusted them. They did their jobs. They played really hard. And uh, their will to win was there. And uh, I was really upset. You know, coming out of our last loss, obviously, when you lose like that, there's a lot of things to be mad about. But to me, it was more about how we played, the lack of physicality that we played with. And it was the opposite. And, and it was demanded. And the guys understood it. And they did a great job being resilient and playing to the standard of competitive football, which is physical football at NC State. And when you watch our film, that's the first thing you should see if you're an opponent is that we're going to play hard. We're going to play really hard. And that's something we've always done. And I felt like we did that uh, in that football game. 
and you can see it in the statistics. You know, I mean, when you talk about winning the line of scrimmage, they rushed the ball for less than two yards of carry. We rushed it for over four yards of carry. And and those kind of things show up. And I stood on that line of scrimmage a lot in that football game to see which way it was going. And the knockback and the strain, um, the continuing to move my man a, a, a direction he doesn't want to go. And at the end of the day, that's what football is. You know, it's two people across from each other trying to impose their will. Um, it's a physical sport and it's got to be played that way. I thought on offense, our perimeter blocking was exceptional and it's not something that gets talked about a lot, but it was, I thought Dakari uh, Collins, Keenan Jackson uh, put on a display of perimeter blocking in that game. Noah, Casey, Wesley, Terrell, they all did a great job going in there and doing some things that you're not recruited to do as a receiver. And that's part of running the football. Uh, and we improved and we've got to improve more, but we did get better. Uh, we caught the football well. We made some good contact catches in the game. We got some good yards after the catch. Justin Jolie had a really nice catch uh, on a second long to get us into a third and short. And then he had a nice catch um, that turned into some yards after the play with some good running. I thought all three backs came in and ran hard, protected the football. They blocked well in pass protection. And I loved the the final drive of the game. You know, we get the ball back with over four minutes and don't give them the ball. And uh, so good complimentary football. You know, negatives on offense, the four penalties. One of them's on our staff. We didn't substitute at the right time and, and got a penalty there. But, um, you know, we had the one personal foul and then the two holding penalties. And, and those kind of penalties kill drives. And so you've got to overcome a lot. And those are things we've got to be better at. We only had four penalties in the game. So, you know, from that standpoint, it was a pretty clean football game. But the ones that we had were drive killers. Um, with Grayson, you know, he got dinged up. And I'm not going to get into the injury. It's good news on him. It's a day-to-day -day thing. We're going to take our time. And when he's ready, he'll be ready. You know, CJ's ready to play. And, and he's our quarterback until that happens. And we're behind him. You know, and, and the thing I would ask, you know, it's not about – The quarterback, it's about cheering for the guy that's in the game. And when the guy's out of the game or if a guy's injured on our football team, praying for that guy to get healthy. I think, you know, as fans, sometimes fans don't understand, you know, that's that's a player that – and that kid loves our football team. And he loves playing the sport. And when you're a 60-year player, uh, man, it's hard when you can't be out there. And the way he came back and cheered on CJ shows a lot about his character. He's a great teammate. He's one of us, and, you know, as a football program, anytime somebody goes down, especially a guy that's in his last year, it's not a season-ending thing, but it's a day-to-day -day thing. We're going to take our time with it. CJ's going to run the show until Grayson's healthy, and I'm excited um, to see what CJ can do, you know, and whoever that quarterback is wearing the red and white, the fans need to have his back, and they need to be supportive. They need to pray for those kind of things when they happen, and and that's what family does. You know, I was really proud of the way that the team rallied around CJ, but, you know, at halftime when he knew it was his time to play, he had a big smile on his face. He was ready for the moment, and now he gets to go do it on the road against a, a really good football team in a, a tough environment. You know, defensively, uh, two takeaways, a fourth down stop, a uh, really good fourth down, fourth down stop on a play action pass out of an exotic formation showed really good discipline. The goal line stand I talked about, you know, we stopped the run. I thought we tackled better for the most part. There was one play that was, uh, I would call disgusting on our part where we missed four tackles. I thought the pick six by DK was a, a great football play. Davin straining, balls up, and then, you know, does a good job himself finding a lane and then taking care of the football. The guys played with a lot of strain on defense. They made plays on some one-on-one -on -one balls. You know, we lost one uh, down the sideline where, where Corey fell down. But for the most part, we were in the right place. We played with poise. We didn't have pass interference calls. I thought our gap integrity was better and our eye discipline was way better. You know, the, uh, negatives, the one uh, explosive pass I talked about should have been tackled. And uh, third down defense got better but can, can continue to get better. And that's an area that – Again, I've talked about a lot, but uh, it did improve. You know, uh, Aiden will be back this week. Cissé, it looks like he'll be fine. And so we should be back to full strength on that side of the football. You know, special teams, I'm proud of Kanoa. Uh, again, he's just 
very steady and uh, you know, 230 plus yarders and a 52 yarder um, points matter. And Colin Smith's done a great job again uh, with our kickoffs, not just with his depth and, and touchbacks, but location. And he's done a nice job. I thought our coverage units were better. We played with much more speed and urgency getting down the field. The return game's really been a non-factor, unfortunately, just a lot of touchback kicks against us. And but uh, Jalen Coit did a really nice job as a punt returner, making some smart decisions when he was in there. And so now we get ready for Clemson at their place, uh, a great place to play football, um, have great respect uh, for their um, coaching staff and their players. It's a trophy game. It's the only trophy game we have, and it uh, means a lot to the universities playing in it all the way back to the Textile Bowl. It's going to be a great matchup and um, very talented team that we're playing. And for us, we just got to focus on getting better and playing four quarters uh, or overtime if it takes overtime. And just being as clean as we can, playing as hard as we can, straining as hard as we can, and just being a little better version of ourselves each week. You know, this is a, a team that will get better. Um, NC State football teams over the years, we pride ourselves on improving as the year goes on. And so that takes an internal focus. It takes uh, guys that are willing to admit the things that they got to do better, coaches fixing things schematically and then evolving, you know, over the course of the season. And we got to play a full game. You know, we've had spurts in games where we looked really good and spurts where we looked really bad. And, and so that's the evolution of this football team is, you know, learning the new parts, the new parts, learning how to play together better and, and how we play NC State football hard, tough together. Uh, it's going to be a loud uh, environment. They're coming off a, a, a game where they looked unstoppable and they scored 50 plus points in the first half against a good Appalachian State football team. And they were explosive in that game offensively. Um, they played some young receivers that really took the top off of coverages. I thought Klubnik threw the ball extremely well in that football game. He's very accurate, showed touch, he showed range. We all know he can run and, and can run and throw. Uh, they're tight end. Uh, number nine, Burning Stool, is a weapon. He's a good player. He made plays on us a year ago. Um, the tailback, Moffa, is a, he's a load. He's tough, big kid. You got to wrap him up. There's a lot of blocking schemes. I think Matt Luke's a really good offensive line coach and new addition to their staff. And um, they've got a good system, you know, and I think obviously like every team, you're seeing them grow and, and unique to be in our fourth game and to say that we're playing our second straight opponent with the bye weeks. Kind of weird, you know, to have teams with buys this early in the season back to back. And so there'll be some adjusting, I'm sure, for us with them having an extra week to play us. But uh, this game's going to be about, you know, matching up, making plays, being physical, and um, not letting the noise of the environment dictate things. You can go down there and get a bunch of penalties. You've got to really stay locked in and focused on what you're doing. And I'm excited about the opportunity to go get better with this team. You know, this team really cares about improving. You know, we put a lot on them last week. There's a lot to improve and, and no different, you know. We've shown what we can do and we showed what we can't. And and I think that's the thing as players, you have to have ownership and and where your improvement is needed. And we have a lot to work on. And that's what I like about this team. This team likes to work. They really do. They're a fun group to coach. And so now we get a chance to go do that again and put it to the test uh, and arguably one of the harder places to play in, in the ACC um, against a really good football coach in Dabo and and have a lot of respect, you know, for him and his staff and and uh, what they stand for. So looking forward to the opportunity and the challenge. Questions? A reminder to use your raise hand emoji. Um, if you have a question, we'll start with Corey Smith. Dave, just to clarify, you mentioned that, you know, CJ will run the show this week. Are you putting him as a starter now at this point, or is there still a question as far as who will be the starter going into Saturday? Yeah, CJ will start the game, and uh, it's his team. And like I said, we'll take it one day at a time with Grayson. And when he's ready to play, he'll be back. And, you know, it's all hands on deck. Thank you. Andrea? Uh, Dave, as a follow-up to that, what sorts of things can you do to help prepare CJ for the type of environment that he's going to be facing and obviously – the type of defense and defensive front that, that Clemson has. 
Yeah, they got a great defensive line. Um, and they do a lot of blitzing, you know. I mean, they're bringing stuff from all over the place. So we got to give them all the looks. We got to show them all the things that uh, not just him, the O-line and the protections with the backs. Obviously, crowd noise is going to be a part of what we're doing every day and, and making sure our cadence functions and the noise that we're going to be dealing with. You know, and then just schematically doing the things that he's best at, giving him the best pictures um, that he can have and then letting him play ball. You know, that's the one thing about him. He's a football player, and that kid understands the game. He's a winner, and um, he's excited, you know. I mean, that's a kid that's excited to play the game, and I'm excited for him. And so, you know, as a team, you just go out there and you do the, uh, everything you can staff-wise to set him up for success, and you know what the challenges are, and you try to give him every – look possible um, so that he can be successful and play fast on Saturday. Noah? Coach, you've talked about in the past you learned, you know, from game situation and having game film. What did you – what were you able to learn, I guess, from CJ's, you know, half of football he was able to play? And how impressive, I guess, was it against the Blitz? You know, it's 8 of 10 for 100 yards. You know, it's what he's done in practice, and so it's great – to, to know that the stuff that he's doing in practice carries into games because uh, obviously you're not getting hit in practice as a quarterback. Now, he's a tough kid. He's competitive. Obviously, his height gives him an advantage to see some things too. But he's been like that since he got here, and it's just reps and reps and reps and reps and how much you want to put on him. But he's a fast learner. He loves the game, and he took what he's done in practices and scrimmages to a live environment and – I mentioned this after the game. I do think it was great that he got to play in the Tennessee game, you know, that he got to go up against that kind of talent and speed and see it firsthand. I mean, that's the best preparation you can give a guy is the reps in a game. James? Dave, uh, Caden Fordham graded out really well on PFF. I'm not sure how you guys graded him out, but just statistically, big-time game from him. How encouraging was that at that position for you guys? Yeah, I think uh, you saw how much we missed him in game one, right, when he was out. And he had his best game. Uh, he played physical. He tackled well. He was all over the field pursuit-wise. He got his hands on some balls, you know, pass breakups. And the Mike position in that defense is going to be around the ball a lot. And he's a disruptive guy, and he's a really smart football player. But I thought Davin Van and and uh, Caden played really, really good when you look at how they strained in the box. And when you're disruptive in the box, it helps things immensely, you know, for our fitters that are coming from the back end. But I was proud of him, and we need that from him. You know, I mean, he's got to play that way, and he's one of the more experienced linebackers we have. And I wanted to follow up. I wanted to ask you about Devon Marshall. Uh, he was yeah. kind of thrust into a big role. Made some big one-on-one -on -one plays for you out at corner. Just your thoughts on him. Yeah, he was the player of the game for us this week. Uh, I thought he was right where he was supposed to be, played poised, played hard. Uh, a lot of times a guy will get in the game and at the moment of truth, he'll grab a guy and he's nervous about giving up a play and he played with technique. He did a really nice job. I mean, he was the one on that fourth and one play action. They motioned the guy and he ended up on a, a tight end that was in a tackle position, covering him on a play action pass, a play that a lot of players would have their eyes in bad spots. He did a really good job showing discipline. And Jackson Vick came in and played in our dime package and did some really good things. They both had big plays in the game on third and fourth downs. Thanks, Dave. You bet. Jaden? Does Grayson's injury history make you a little more cautious? Or are you kind of approaching like, his recovery like you would on, you know, any typical situation? Yeah, I mean, every injury is different. And I'm not the one that – goes down there and says, this is what we're doing. You know, we have complete faith and trust in Justin Smith and our, our docs. we got incredible uh, doctors here and whatever they say is what we're going to do. And, you know, my focus is on just being supportive for all these kids, you know, when they're out, Aiden White was out last week and Devin Boykin's out and now Grayson, you know, you, you got to be there for these guys and they're each different. And even though you've had a player with a similar injury in the past, it's a different player. And, so you just be there for them. You're supportive. You get them the care they need. And when they're ready to play, they're ready to play, you know. And I think that's the thing is trying to get these guys back. I've been injured as a player. It's terrible. Like, it, it sucks. You feel removed from everything. And, you know, as a head coach, I'm very, very uh, understanding of that, you know, and you try to be there for them. 
but each injury is different to your point and you just have to let the doctors tell you what the timeline looks like and in his case we've gotten good news you know it's just how long does it take even coach i think pff had you guys down as only allowing four pressures so the pass protection really looked like it did well against louisiana tech um and it seemed like the running backs picked up well and all of that how would you assess the uh team's pass blocking as a team and not necessarily only the offensive line. Yeah, there was a couple plays in that game uh, where they got free on us and got some hits that, you know, ended up, whether it's a sack or a hit, you don't want your quarterback on the ground, right? And and so you look at all of that. I do think we've had good pockets throughout the season. Um, we've gotten beat like everybody has, but overall our pass protection has been good. We've had time to get rid of the football. Our quarterbacks have done a good job throwing it away for the most part when they couldn't extend plays with their feet. But uh, that really hasn't been the issue as much as efficient run game. And that got better in this game. You know, we were rushing the ball below our standard uh, going into that football game. And I thought it got better and better as that game went on. And again, you rush for over four yards of carry. That's what you're looking for. Andrea. Dave, I wanted to ask you a, another question in terms of the run game that you mentioned, obviously the offensive line. Having an opportunity now after the Tennessee game with what you saw last week, um, how big slash important is it that you did see the type of push that you saw from the line going into this game and maybe allow the line a bit of, I don't know if redemption is the right word, but just improvement over what happened against Tennessee? Yeah, we got better. You know, I think it's a multitude of things, and it's it's not just the O-line. You know, let's make that clear. You know, when you run the football, sometimes there's a tight end in there. There's a, a second back in there. Sometimes there's a receiver. You're asking to block a perimeter player. And, and it, if it was as easy as one player on the O-line to fix, it'd be fixed. You know, it's a collective thing in, in running the football, and we did get better. Our tracks were better. I thought we missed one read. At running back, we could have had a pretty big run if we would have stayed on our track. But the timing of running the football and, and all the things that are happening with blitzes and stunts and picking those up with the speed they come at you, you know, wasn't good in the first two games. It got better in the third game. And, and to your point, that's we just have to keep getting better, keep getting better and stay efficient, stay on the positive side of, you know, efficiency when it comes to calling plays because it helps as a play caller when it's second – six plus or minus versus the other way around where it's second and eight, second and nine, second and 10. Um, and that was a big point of emphasis with coach and I, you know, is we need to be efficient, you know, and if you can get efficient down and distances, we'll score more points. And that's what you saw happen in the second half. And the guys know that and we just got to keep pushing on them and they got to keep doing their part just to block, you know, it's strain and get your hot, your hat in the right place. And, but I was um, trying to think of the right way to say this. I'm not satisfied by any means with the run game. I'm I'm happy it got better. You know, I saw the improvement. And if you watch every position, it got better. I mean, every position, the guys were straining. They were fighting to stay on their blocks and push guys down the field. And that's what it takes. And if you do that over time and you get into the fourth quarter, then it really takes over a game when you need it to by wearing people down. And so progress, and that's good. Rob? Yeah, Dave, in the expanded ACC, uh, Clemson, without the divisions, Clemson remained an assigned rival. So you'll be dealing with them every year. And, of course, you mentioned the textile bowl, the trophy game aspect of it. Um, obviously, that's a tough road to hoe. But at the same time, do you kind of convey to your kids, hey, this, this team for the last decade's really been the – the creme de la creme of the ACC, and this is a barometer game for us to see where we stand. How do you how do you approach that when you you have you deal with a team that's done so well? You know, I don't think the last ten years matter, Rob. Uh, I don't. You know, college football these days. I mean, every team's got so many new parts, and um, it what matters is the guys on your team that have played against these teams. And you know, you have a lot of players that have played well against Clemson, obviously. We need to get the job done down there. And that's something we haven't done. And we've been close. Close doesn't get it done. And so it's more about how do we win this football game and, and focus on those things. How can we play better for four quarters instead of, 
two quarters here, two quarters there. You know, I think how you win a game against a good football team is you don't turn the football over. You play physical, you know, give up explosive plays for scores. You're really efficient in your special teams departments with your field position. And that's the focus of winning. It's not 10 years ago what's happened. I mean, these, these guys were eight years old, you know, that's not going to help us win the football game. Well, I guess, and then does that extend to the last three years then? Because you, you guys have had success against them the last three years. I think you beat them two or three. Is that, right. or is it still, no, this is one game, we focus on this? Yeah, I think, you know, beating them in the past helps. You know, I think there was a time where, I don't know how many in a row it was that we'd lost to them, um, where it seemed like a mountain we couldn't climb, you know, and that's not the case anymore. We know that we can beat them. We also know that they're a really good team and playing them at home, they're even better team. And so you got to play a certain way. And I think that's where playing Tennessee earlier helps us because we have seen a really good team on the field already. And so their level of speed and size and the combination of both isn't going to be shocking, you know, going out there. But uh, we know, you know, what Clemson's program has been and, and how good their talent is and what kind of game we have to play, you know, playing against a team like them. And I have a lot of respect for, for their football team and what Dabo's done there. Thank you, sir. Brian Murphy. Yeah, thanks, Coach. You've had a history now of having to play multiple quarterbacks, multiple starting quarterbacks over over years. Uh, how, how does that help this team? How does it help you guys as a staff get ready? And then who is behind Bailey, and, and how do you get that person ready in case they have to play? Yeah, I mean, it's that's an unfortunate thing to be used to. Um, you know, I had a run there for a while with Jacoby Brissett and Ryan Finley where we didn't have that problem, and now we have. And, and so – you know, I don't know if that helps or not helps. I do think there's a history with the next man in playing really good ball for us. And, you know, that's what we expect. And, and I think all of our kids completely believe in CJ and know that he'll go in and play his butt off. Uh, Lex Thomas is our next quarterback. And so Lex has been, the, you know, getting reps all year, all through spring, all through fall camp. He's ready to go. And, and so that's what we'll look like uh, until Grayson's healthy. Noah? Kind of going off of that, what is the biggest thing you've learned, you know, with having to use multiple quarterbacks in a year? I think it was a stretch of four of the last five years you've done that. So what's been, I guess, the biggest learning tool after having that consistent quarterback play early in your, your career here? Well, you got to have depth, for one, because you're always one play away, you know, from the next guy being in. Uh, competition and depth, you got to recruit well at that spot, and you got to coach them all like they could play. You know, you can't, hey, here's our starter, and – you may not get in unless we're winning. You got to coach them all like you're going to play in this game. And um, we've been able to do that. You know, we've had success over the years, not just with our backup, even our third and one year our fourth uh, came in and played a really good game. So, you know, Kurt Roper is a really good quarterback coach. He'll have the guys ready to play. They'll be excited for their opportunity, and we'll put a package together that they can execute at a high level. Last two, James. Yeah, Dave, I thought Louisiana Tech did a, a good job bottling up KC, uh, tackling him well, kind of, you know, keeping him down to a degree. But you saw your other guys step up at that position at wide receiver. How big was that for you guys? Yeah, yeah it was great to see uh, the outside receivers. You know, when I said this to KC yesterday, you know, you've earned a lot of respect because of how good a player you've been. And there's more people. And when you're playing a drop eight team like Law Tech was, it's easier, you know, to remove and have a, a linebacker under him, a safety over him, reroute player with a guy over the top of him or to bracket him. And and so we've got to be really creative, which is Robert's uh, favorite thing to do is be creative. We've got to find ways to move him around and make it hard for teams to key on him. And at the same time, there's going to be players that are benefactors of that. You know, if, if people do that, there's a lot of one-on-ones in other position groups whether it's the tight end with Joe Lee, the outside receivers, the running backs. And we got to win our one-on-ones when we get them, uh, those guys. And we'll find ways to continue to get KC the ball. And it can't just be on screens. And, you know, we got to get them the football down the field. And that's our job. And, Andrea, you can finish this up. Dave, I'm going to squeeze one more in here. Um, do you like the fact that you're playing Clemson this early on does this give do you feel like the team an an opportunity and no offense to louisiana tech but just to prove that you're a better team than what you showed against tennessee 
Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, we're going to play him somewhere in that list. Uh, it is – Annabelle probably knows better than me. I have opened the ACC with them several times, and so it's not the first time doing this. So, I don't know. It's wherever the – scheduling rubric decides to throw them on there we got to play them and i don't know if it matters to be honest with you you know uh having them early having them late um playing a noon game down there it's going to be hot you know so that adds a little bit of an element to it versus playing them later in the year down there where it may not be a weather type thing that can test you a little bit and so that part of it's probably the only negative to it i see you know it's just the weather that you get at noon in south carolina versus playing them maybe in October or November. But uh, it's early in the season. It's the first opportunity to play an ACC game. I think we open with them in a few years to start the season, if I'm not mistaken, like in 28. And so wherever they put them, we got to line up and play them. All right. Thank you, guys. Coach, thanks, everybody. Thanks, Dave. Yep.